Hey everyone, I'm Mallory, the Foster Medical Assistant here at the Asheville Humane Society. Some subjects we're going to cover in this video are how to do a basic head-to-tail exam on a cat, how to properly zero a scale and record weight, basic feline restraint techniques, preparing and administering vaccines, administering flea preventatives, how to trim nails, administering heartworm medication as well as dewormer and other oral medications, and basic puppy handling. This is Cotton, who graciously offered up her help for this video. You'll also meet Boodles, another very sweet kitty. These two are very, very good for their exams, but not all of our patients will always be this still. This is where we have to adjust and use different combinations of techniques that you'll learn in this video and in our hands-on training. We're going to start out any appointment with a head-to-tail exam. A great way to start is to just look at your patient as a whole. I'm doing this while scratching Cotton's chin and petting her. I can check her body condition this way especially since her hair is longer for any mats or debris like litter or stool stuck in her fur. I'm going to start out looking at her face. While I'm petting her, I start to look at her head and look at her eyes, which are clear. Her nose, which does not have any discharge. I'm taking a look at her ears. I'm not seeing any debris in there in either ear. And I'm also going to look in her mouth. You can see she doesn't love that and does push my hand away. She's an older gal who had a dental recently, so I'm not going to push her too much. I'm going to move along and check her paws, make sure there's no litter stuck there, check her rear, make sure there's not any stool or litter stuck to her fur. Um, I'm kind of checking all down her spine and all of that. She's doing absolutely wonderful. For recording weight, we always want to ensure that we have a flat surface to put our scale on so we can record an accurate weight. Here we've removed our towel on our medical table to do this, but anywhere works. We want to press the zero button that EB does there to tear out our scale, and then once it's zeroed, we can go ahead and put our patient on the scale. Cotton is really great and very agreeable for this, but it is often that we have kittens that aren't staying still. That's when you can use your hands to block off escape routes and kind of hold them a little bit still. You can put your hand very gently on them too without changing their weight. We're going to talk about some super basic restraint. For most physical exams, you only need minimal restraint. Most of the time for kittens and cats, you're not really going to have to hold them very still for things. So starting out, we're going to show you a really basic C-grip. This is going to give us control and also be the most comfortable for cotton. So here I've got my thumb on one side of her jaw, and I'm bringing my hand around to have my other three fingers on the other side of her jaw with my finger on top. You can see I can move her to the left and to the right, and I'm also able to aim her away from somebody else if I need to, as well as touch anywhere along her body that I need to. Um, if you need to, you can change to a light scruff. Um, I usually try and avoid this as much as I can because it's a little bit more stressful and a little less comfortable for the cat. Another low stress option is to use a towel wrap when you need to for restraint. This is especially great for kitties that try to escape or ones that are really good at using their paws or are really nervous. You're going to start with your towel flat, wrap one side around your patient, tucking it in tightly, and bringing her around to the other side. This is going to let me move her around, touch her face, touch her side wherever I need to. I could loosen the towel in places to give a vaccine. I can look at her mouth without her pawing at me like she did earlier, look at her eyes, anything that I need to do. She's really patient for this, fortunately. You can see from this angle how we tuck it in on that first side before we bring the other side around and over and then tuck it in. That is going to give us both a portable cat, so if you ever have a cat that you can't get in a carrier, this can help. If you need to weigh her in that towel and then weigh the towel later, that can also be an option. To administer vaccines, you're always going to be using a sterile 3cc or 3ml syringe. Um, all of the vaccines we're going to be giving do need to be reconstituted, so we'll have a sterile water and powder, which will be reconstituted to make one mil of the vaccine. You're going to want to open the package. I usually do that by pushing it through. Um, and we want to be careful to keep the needle sterile. So you don't want to take the cap off until you're ready to drop your vaccine, like so. You're going to start by poking your needle right in the center of that red rubber, where the rubber is going to be the thinnest. And you're going to draw back your sterile dilutant. Um, so that is going to be one mil. And then you're going to remove your needle out of that bottle. And you're going to place it into the powder. 
to mix your vaccine. So it's under a little bit of suction, so it'll pull it in on its own. Um, and then you either want to invert it or move it back and forth for just a moment to make sure that your vaccine is properly mixed. As you're doing that, you want to go ahead and draw back your vaccine. Um, it'll come to one mil. It's a nice pink color now instead of that clear, sterile water. After you've pulled back, then you do want to push forward to get all of the air out of the vaccine and recap your needle so it stays sterile. We're always going to vaccinate all of our animals in the same areas just so that we can watch for any sort of vaccine reaction or anything like that. So for our FERCP and distemper vaccines that you'll be doing, it's always going to be their left shoulder. And I think we're going to turn her around so you can see it just a little bit better. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to pinch her skin, and we call that tenting the skin, and it will feel a little indentation. We're going to inject the vaccine just subcutaneously, just under her skin in that tent right there. We do want to do it kind of lower down on the arm as much as possible. And cotton is really great for that. You can see that we didn't really need to do much restraint. Evie just kind of distracted her petting her, and then we give her a reward with lots of pets afterwards. Applying flea preventative is also really easy. We use Frontline Gold here at the shelter for both our cats and dogs. It's really easy to use. You just push down and twist while you're kind of screwing that little applicator on. Um, you'll feel a pop and then you want to go to the hair on the back of their neck or in between their shoulder blades. We just don't want them to be able to lick it off. You're going to part that hair and get it on the skin. It's very important that you get it on the skin rather than the fur for it to actually work properly. All right, for nail trimming, also very easy. Um, so cats generally keep their claws retracted. We need to gently apply pressure to their paw pads to push them forward in order to trim the tips. Here, Cotton let me, lets me gently kind of just hold her paw, push that little claw out, and just trim it on my own as much as I can. I try and do it on my own before I stress them out by holding them really tightly. You do want to be careful when you're cutting that you're only cutting the tip, not getting near that pink area. That's the quick, the blood supply to the nail. Um, and when I can, I try and do nails a few at a time or just kind of however much they'll let me take a break and come back to it. Um, but cotton, like I said, is really wonderful for this. She even lets me get to her second paw without getting super fed up. Worst case scenario, if they do start to get fed up, you can get your partner and have them hold for you. So Evie's just going to gently hold her on her side. Sometimes you could do this with a C-grip if needed. Um, and this is going to let me trim her back nails if I needed to do her fronts too and she was being less agreeable. We could definitely do that. So here's Boodles. She's our next uh, volunteer to help me explain about giving some medications. We'll start out some with some liquid medications or dewormers. You always want to have all of your supplies ready before restraining your patients. So you can see we're just kind of letting Boodles walk around. Um, whenever you're giving a liquid medication, it's always going to be reconstituted in oil or water. So you want to shake it really well. Make sure you're not seeing any sort of debris around the edges there. Um, our de dewormer bottles here also have a great thing called a plurfit. Um, it means that we can basically turn it upside down without anything coming out but you can also poke a syringe into it to pull out medications. Um, when you do draw back medications, a lot of the time there's a little air bubble. Um, when you see that, you just want to push all the medication back in and draw it out again. That'll get rid of that little air bubble that was there so that you have an accurate amount of your medication. Then you can just pull it out and then you're ready to administer it. If I'm doing a group, I like to get all of those ready at once. Um, we always use HeartGuard, both for our cats and dogs. It's a heartworm preventative. Um, it's a little chewable tablet. It does have flavor. You just pop it out of its packaging. And it's kind of big, so I usually like to break it up into smaller pieces. Sometimes two, sometimes three, kind of depending on the size of the cat and the size of the pill. And sometimes we're really lucky, and they'll eat it on their own. It is flavored. Some cats will eat it like a treat. Some cats won't. Boodles isn't super interested in this. I try and convince her a couple times, but she's not fallen for it. <laughs> so 
So since she isn't, we're going to go ahead and pill her. Um, so we can use a pill popper. We can also use our fingers. Um, a pill popper is basically just a plunger with a little rubberized tip um, that the pill goes in the end and then you push it. We'll show you how to use that in just a second. But I personally like to pill cats using my fingers as much as possible. She tricks us into thinking that she might eat it and then just spits it out, which tends to happen a lot with the heartworm preventative. They taste it and they're like, oh, it's not really that great. So I'm going to hold her with a C-grip with my non-dominant hand, open her mouth, and use my finger to push that pill at the back of her throat. It's kind of a fluid motion. It's something that you do need to practice some to get it right. It's something that we can definitely practice in person too. Another thing you can do is use that towel wrap that we talked about before. I'm going to do kind of a looser modified one for her just because we only need it for just a second. And then that's going to let me do that C-grip and also pill her. That's really helpful when you touch their mouth and they really try and paw you away to control their paws like that so that you don't get scratched. So for your pill popper, these sometimes work well, sometimes they don't. Some people are really great at using them. It's all preference. Um, it has that little plunger. You can see I'm kind of pushing it in and out right there. It catches in a little spot, and that's how you kind of know it's pushed all the way or that you have it pulled back to the right spot. So in that rubber tip, you're going to put your pill or heartworm preventative or throw it. Um, once you get it in there, sometimes it can be hard to get it to stay in that little rubber spot. You can push and it'll come out. You can kind of see that that sticks there a little bit. It's totally preference. Some people love these. I personally have more trouble with them, um, but they are really great when you have a cat that is very resistant to getting pilled so that your fingers don't get bit. It's just think of it as an extension. So for pilling, I usually do scruff the cat just because it's easier. I come in behind their canines and poke it down their throat. That rubberized tip means that you can push it all the way to the back of their throat without hurting them. You can see for me, the pill kind of stuck and then she spat it out the first time. The second time we get it. Um, with the heartworm preventative, since it's a few pieces, sometimes that's a little bit tough. For syringing oral medications like dewormer or even upper respiratory meds, anything like that, it's going to be a very similar technique where we come in behind their canines and just push the plunger down to get the medication down their throat. For puppies, it's also quite easy. We're just going to show you a basic head to tail exam since everything is just about the same. So this is Hercules. And here you can see Evie's kind of helping me because he's extra wiggly. So I'm taking a look at his teeth in his mouth. His eyes are nice and clear, and we'd look at his ears just the same way as a cat, kind of feeling his body all the way down while he wiggles everywhere, checking his rear, making sure it's not inflamed, anything like that. He's just going to wiggle and think he's getting attention from Evie. As much as we can, we want to trick them into thinking that it's just happy, fun, playtime, rather than heavy restraint for things. It's much easier. For the scale, same thing, flat surface. We're going to zero it out again. Um... And then for puppies, they are a little bit more wiggly, so it can be a little bit harder, which is obviously we're having a second person who's very, very helpful with any sort of puppy exams. So we've got to get him to stand relatively still on this. We're doing this by petting him. You could try food as well if you wanted to. And we're just keeping an eye on that scale, seeing where it lands once all four feet are on. It's not going to be as exact with a puppy because they're so wiggly. <laughs> So Evie is going to hold Hercules for me to do any sort of vaccines or anything. He's so wiggly and just trying to kind of jump off the table. You can also do this on the floor, but Evie just picks him up in this instance because it's much easier. He's perfectly happy being held, and we're going to vaccinate him in that left shoulder, just like we did the cats. Evie's holding his head nice and still for me so he can't turn too much, even though he does a little bit at the end. Um, and then we just play with him right after we give that vaccine. So same thing where you tent the skin, poke it in, super easy, dispose of your sharps, all that good stuff. And while we're doing this, we're just still petting him, convincing him that nothing's really happening. For oral meds, it's going to be about the same as a cat. He's a little more excited, so you could always put food on the end. Sometimes putting hot dog or cheese on the end can help. Or you can just open their mouth and just push the plunger down as you're behind their canines again. 